Alright, at this point we got our frame stripped, motors out, everything is out that we need uh, in order to cut the frame and start getting ready, prepping it to put our hardtail on. So you can see we left a lot back here. Um, that's just because we're going for speed. So if anybody's keeping track, so far we are about two and a half hours in on our teardown. Took us about two and a half hours for Seth and I to tear this thing down to this state. So uh, all this we just left. There's no sense of pulling it off. We are gonna make our cuts here and here and here. And so you can see on the frame, we're gonna replace this section of the backbone right up to about here. And then down here, these two studs are gonna graft in here. So when you buy your throttle addiction hardtail, it will come with a set of directions. It is very, very simple. You're gonna take three measurements, you follow those. So what we're gonna do is measure down the center tube from the top corner here of the neck. We're gonna come back 16 inches and that's gonna be our mark for a cut for here. And then if you turn to page two on the directions on the bottom, from this cross member right here, we're gonna come back two and three eighths inches, and that is gonna be our cut point for where we'll match up there. Um, now when we do these cuts, a couple things, we're gonna cut long and trim back, and then we're gonna put a bevel on there, we're gonna sand uh, the paint off so we have a nice clean welding surface, and we are gonna leave, if you look here, you'll see that the uh, slugs that are in here that come pre-welded in, there's a little uh, tack weld right there. That ensures that you leave a gap, so when we weld, we're filling that in. The other really important thing, uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't say, if you're not a welder, leave this portion up to a professional. It's really easy to strip this down. It's really easy to do the cuts. If you got a little 110 buzz box at home, you can even tack it in there. But when it comes to doing these full structural welds, you need to use um, a welder that has some higher volts and amperage, um, you need one that, you know, if you don't know about welding, you need one that runs off of a 220 plug. That's gonna have enough um, power to actually penetrate this and give you enough solid structural weld that you're comfortable riding down the road on a motorcycle. Um, so just make sure that if you don't have those capabilities or that equipment, that you farm it out to somebody. But again, cutting, fitting it together, tack it up, even if you got a little 110 at home, you can do that, bring it to a weld shop, let a professional, put a really nice bead around there for you. So with that being said, we're gonna get our measurements here, 16 inches back, two and three eighths back. Um, we're gonna mark them, and then we're gonna take a piece of paper that's, that's straight, wrapped around so we know we have a perfectly um, uniform edge all the way around, and make the cuts there, uh, trim back to the finished surface, fit our frame on, then we will put our motor in and we will use the motor really to align everything. So when you're putting these together, you don't need a jig, your motor will align everything. Another point of note on our kits versus some others on the market. Um, we machine these slugs to fit the tubing on the stock frame. So this is all DOM 120 tubing, 120 wall. This is not, Harley stock frame did not use 120 wall tubing, it's a thinner tube. So these slugs are actually thinner, we, had to, we machined them down to fit in here, and then there's a step and they're larger here. But when you put it in, this all goes in like butter, it's gonna fit in and it's gonna align everything perfectly. Some of the other kits that are out there, they have a, a uniform slug, but what happens is when you put it into here, because it fits in there, which has a smaller ID, when you put it in here with a larger ID, you have slop around. So your seams, your edges of your tube, although the outside diameter is perfect, doesn't line up straight because it's flopping around inside this tube. So that's kind of an advantage of our kit and something that you get you know, with the quality that we're putting out. So that being said, we're gonna get after it. So here we're just using a uh, straight ruler. We're 16 inches right there. Scribe a little mark in there. Okay. Down here, we're coming off from the inside of this cross member, two and three eighths back. Follow your directions, obviously. Coming back two. And there we go. So we're gonna mark the line. Um, we're gonna use a silver Sharpie. And then a little trick, make sure you take a straight edge piece of paper and you can wrap that 
all the way around there. And if you line your two, two, your two ends up, you know that you have a, uh, a square cut or a square chunk all the way around. So, you know, people are gonna be like, oh, don't mark with a Sharpie. That's not super accurate. The fact of the matter is, there's a little bit of wiggle room in this. Once you put that frame or that uh, motor in, it's going to line everything up. So we'll cut off the line and then we'll come back and clean up to it. And the same thing down here with these. Now the other thing to note is just which side your paper's on because that's kind of your cut point, right? So obviously I'm a little fat, but my, my cut line there is on the far side, so. All right, not that I don't trust Mr. Zachary here, but uh, before you cut your Sportster in half, probably a good idea to have someone else check it, or at least double check your own work. So we got 16 inches, and we got two and three eighths, as well as two and three eighths. We are ready to cut. The other thing, which is easy to do, is we're gonna cut fat, but you gotta think which side you wanna cut fat on. So this is the good portion of the frame. We're trashing that. We wanna cut on the downstream side of everything. So just put a little X there. We want to be on that side and then we'll trim back to there. Same thing here, we want to be on that side and that side and we'll trim back to there to get to our point. Now, uh, how you cut it, man, that's up to you. You're just cutting metal tube, it's not super thick. Uh, can certainly do it with a hacksaw if that's all you got. Most guys have a four inch angle grinder. That works fine. Sawzall works. Um, we are going to go at it here with our porta band because this thing's pretty sweet and makes quick work of all this, so let's get after it. Before I do, I'm gonna throw on my Rett safety glasses, Z87 Plus. Great looking safety glasses, available at throttleaddiction.com. All right, here we go on the top one. Actually, gotta come on this side so that my guard doesn't hit the, uh, the motor mount there. like that. We have separated. separated. We have separation. All right, now it's just time to cl prep, clean up. You can see we cut deep, so we'll grind back, cut back to our lines here. Um, we'll get everything cleaned up, all the paint off, and then we'll get it over, slip it together, weld it up. All right, so we got our uh, tubes trimmed up, everything sanded down, we'll get it cleaned and wiped down with acetone before we uh, welded in there, but I want to show you the slug so you can see this one is separately machined. This is the bottom one uh, This skinny side goes into the DOM on the hardtail frame and this fits in there And you can see how nice of a fit there is on that um, the top one is a uniform But it'll go in But if you can see in there, there's actually a little seam on the tube So it doesn't want to let it go in all the way you can hammer it in but if you get in there with a die grinder and maybe a carbide, you can clean that up, or a file. Um, that makes this, this slug fit in there a lot nicer. There you go. Okay, so now we're uh, almost there. We need to uh, drill our holes through these sections. We'll put a rosette weld there, so that will um, weld through the frame into the slugs that go in there. So. We'll just punch them and we'll drill our holes all the way through on both sides. 
You want to keep it about a half inch from the end of your tubing. Our uh, slugs, they penetrate about that, so you want to get it kind of right in the middle. So we got everything prepped up here. Uh, we got our frame ready to put on. Um, couple things, when the hardtail ships, it's gonna have this spacer. So after we weld these frames, we have a fixture that we fit them in that matches this spacing. We, we space it out to that and we tack this little plate on. This plate comes off. Um, you know, when it comes out of our shop, we do our best, like I said, we fit it into a fixture. But these things can move. These can move when you cut it. So there's a decent chance that you're gonna be off by just a tiny little bit, a 16th or something, and it's gonna kinda take some manipulation to get your things to line up. So what I would suggest is get yourself one of these. This is a manifold spreader. They're like 10 bucks, you can get them anywhere, Amazon, Napa, whatever. And uh, they're for putting um, manifolds onto to car motors if you need to tweak um, where the exhaust pipe comes in a little bit. But they work really great. Uh, put them down in here and more often than not it's going to be too narrow and so it needs to get spread out a little bit so uh, you can put it in there and then you just take a wrench and that'll just give you tiny little increments of spacing to get it to slide really nicely in there so again I would uh, if you're gonna do one of these it's worth spending the 10 bucks on that so put that in here then we're gonna pop these loose uh, just cut off these tacks again because this is this is just kind of for shipping and to get it in its general vicinity of where it needs for uh, to fit into the frame. So. so getting this on is a pretty much a two-person job. It makes it a lot easier. So start up at the top, get her kind of in there, and then you're going to have to give it a push to get it up in there. And this is where it might, what do you think, be a little wider? Yeah. There we go, see how it just kind of dropped. And everything. Kind of get in. There you go. And down like that, so Beautiful. the key is um, we'll get her pulled together. But uh, prepping the inside of those tubes and everything, a lot of times there's rust in there, there's those seams. Since the slugs do fit so tight, make sure that you get the inside of the stock frame tubes prepped out really well. That'll make your life a lot easier when you slide it in. Um, again, also, we pulled <clears throat> this spacer and we use this manifold spreader. Um, it was actually a little fat, so we kind of, for this one, so we, uh, you can spread on the slugs, but then by the time you get down, if you pull it there, then they kind of want to pinch together, so um, you want to put it on the outside. We're kind of using it improperly, pulled one of the things, but gets the job done and lets it spread out there nice and uh, match the front tubing. So now we'll get um, the motor in, get everything cinched together and get some tack welds on her. Step one, put your apron on so you don't f*** up your Aloha shirt. <laughs> Step two, you gotta kind of wedge it, get it in there. And then like I said, you can see these dull pins over here if we rotate that. Get the dowels on the bottom, so those have to go in on the lower motor mount first. And do not tighten it up till those are in, because I've seen it before and it'll break your case. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You... All right. Jared, you want to give a hand on the operation there? Oh, skillet. You're in. Stay there. Get the other one. I think it's the one you're not in the washers. There you go. Key here. Get everything in, everything started, don't tighten anything yet. You know, 
installation is opposite of disassembly. So one thing to point out, uh, the stock uh, bolts for your rear motor mounts, you're gonna have to replace those uh, on, on both sides because the, the one coming off the stock frame is much longer. So um, you're gonna have to run to the hardware store and, uh, and grab a set of grade eight bolts to replace those. All right, we got all of our motor mount bolts tightened up. Um, got them all back in, tightened everything down. So a couple checks, you know, you just want to make sure that your backbone is uh, uniform. So, you know, we just run a straight edge down there. We don't have any breaks. That all runs true. You can kind of hit it side to side too with a, with a straight edge. Um, once this goes in, you know, the good thing too, you can pull a string line or if you have a laser is a nice thing. Uh, run your laser down there and then check your gap. Your width between your axle plates should be at about eight and a half inches, um, right in there. And so, as you come down, you should be hitting that uh, four and a quarter if you put a ruler through there. That ensures you know that you're not cocked one way or another, a double check before you weld it up. But we got everything tightened up with our motor in here, so we're gonna take it over. We are gonna give it a good, a solid tack weld out as we can, and then, the motor's gonna have to come back out to finish welding everything up, and um, then we will start with final assembly. All right, we got uh, frame welded on, motor is in, got her back over here on the table, and now we are gonna start putting this back together. Seth, what do you got for time? Uh, we are at four hours and 46 minutes and nine seconds. And that, does that include uh, in-betweens or is that, that, that that's, that's pretty stopping accurate. for breaks. That's, we took that's, a couple breaks. We took a couple breaks. It's about uh, what, two o'clock? It is 3.19. Okay, it's 3.19. So we started at eight, here's where we're at at three. We had lunch, we had some shenanigans in between, but not too bad. So now we're gonna throw as much back out here as we can and see if we can get this puppy running real quick.